On ABC, LA beat up Brooklyn in BK by 25. Yes, without LeBron or Anthony Davis. Meanwhile, the Nets had Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant was back, but no James Harden. Max. I realize KD was on a minutes restriction. I realize Kyrie was ejected, but still, we didn't expect this. What concerns you most about Brooklyn? Well, let's put injury and health aside for a second, because you can say that about every team, right? We talk about that with the Lakers, with the Nets. What concerns me the most is this. Remember last week, Stephen A., when we were debating who the most important player on the Brooklyn team is, on the Nets is? And I... I'm not going to say, like, KD is the best player on the team. I'm not arguing that. Kyrie is the most spectacular. Harden's the most important. Look, I know, as Molly said, KD's on a minutes restriction. He was very efficient. Kyrie gets tossed. Was beginning of the third quarter. I get it. The fact of the matter is this team, because they were losing when Kyrie got tossed. Like, they, they were down in the game. James Harden showed up to a team he hadn't played on earlier this season. Fat and out of shape, looking like a hot mess, and was a walking triple-double with 30 points in wins. Like, Harden organizes that offense and makes that team basically unbeatable when he's on the floor. They were almost unbeatable without KD. You take Harden off that team, it is simply not the same. There's no one more important on that team than Harden. Now, why does that concern me the most? Kyrie is a proven playoff performer. I've seen Kyrie perform at MVP levels in the finals. We've also seen that from KD. And while Harden might be able to do that, and while he's trending in the right direction, his play's getting better when it matters most, what we've seen consistently in his career is when it matters most, he's no longer James Harden. That's the problem for the Nets, other than health, of course. If Harden somehow can't rise to the occasion in the playoffs, that could be an issue for the Nets. Otherwise, if this team is healthy... Nothing can stop them. Harden, what last night told me, Harden, or this weekend, is the most important player on Brooklyn. Harden uh, is a league-leading MVP candidate. He's been spectacular this year. Uh, we all know, I know that KD is the, is, the, is the most important player, not just the best player on the team, because the bottom line is this. They can win the title with KD and Kyrie. They can win the title with James Harden and KD. They cannot win the title without KD, but with Harden and Kyrie. It's just that simple to me. That's number one. Number two, what is my biggest concern with the Brooklyn Nets? It is Kyrie Irving. Because in the aftermath of this loss, we've learned he's not going to play again tonight because he has personal reasons to do so. Look. Here's the reality. I'm not trying to... Whatever's going on in Kyrie Irving's personal life, it's his business. Uh, he missed a couple of uh, three games or so earlier this year because of a family matter. Obviously, he was gone for two, re two weeks. He said he needed a break and, you know, violated uh, uh, COVID-19 safety protocols or whatever and ended up missing, uh, you know, uh, additional seven games. And then after that, got fined for the two games. Uh, the reality is when are we going to start talking about that? When are we going to start talking about that? I mean, from, from a temperamental perspective, uh, the, the, the dude doesn't appear to be that reliable. We know he's spectacular. We know he's a superstar talent. I think he's the best show in the NBA. He is absolute, positively box office. But this is not a guy that seems to have a consistent commitment to wanting to play. Now, I don't know that to be true. All I know is what we're seeing. Once again, this is going to be 15. He's already missed 15 games this year. It's about to be 16 tonight. What the hell is going on? You only played 20 games last year in Brooklyn. Okay, you didn't play in the bubble. Then you come out of, you know, you didn't want people to play in the bubble because you wanted folks to focus on other issues. And it turns out you got your own issues, whatever they may be. And so we wish him. And his family and everybody, nobody's wishing anything negative about them. Nobody, nobody's doing that. We all hope that everything, everything and everybody is okay. But I don't recall Kyrie at any point saying, here's your money back. You know, you don't have to pay me. But you missing games at your discretion. I mean, how many personal days do you need? You don't play every day. You got 72 games this year instead of 82. You only played 20 out of the 72 last year. What the hell is going on where you don't, you just missing games? Because let me tell you something, continuity and chemistry do matter. Yes, you can give them the ball and they can do what they want to do as individuals when you're going up against most teams in the NBA. But what about the elite teams? 
What about the Lakers, who didn't have LeBron and AD? And watch Ben McLemore come off the bench straight off the street and drop 17 on you Saturday night. Andre Drummond dropping 20 and 11. I mean, the Lakers ain't going away. Denver's not going away. The Clippers are not going away. Milwaukee and Philadelphia is not going away. At some point, the level of uh, a, a continuity and chemistry has to come into play. And when you're just missing games and literally saying, well, you know what? I just need personal days. I mean, damn. See, this is where the rookie coach that is Steve Nash comes into play. Because if that were one of the more experienced coaches, you think you're getting away with that? You think you're getting away with that? You're just going to take games off. On three separate occasions in the same season. This ain't Dennis Rodman years ago as was revealed in the last dance, Max, where he needed a break. So Phil calls Jordan into the office and Jordan's like, if anybody need a break, I need a break. What the hell he need a break for? But they let him take it. And then go, and then Jordan had to go to the room and, and tell Common Electra move out the way. Dennis Rodman, let's go. This ain't that. There's three separate occasions in the same season. A little bit more than 50 games in where this brother has taken time off. Ain't getting oh. money back, though. Ain't getting money back, though. But he's taking time off. When is somebody going to say something about that? That's all you I'm knew, saying. You knew where I was going with the Dennis Rodman thing for sure because it, Dennis Rodman had certain issues. But he was a very valuable player when he was on the court, and Michael Jordan oh. knew it, and Michael Jordan needed him, right? So Dennis Rodman can get away with it. There, nobody's there, saying to throw Kyrie There players like that. In every sport, Stephen A., I think about our Yankees back in the day. David Wells would go and party all night, show up the next day, still, you know, wasted basically, and pitch a perfect game. Like, some guys got it like that, and you Hold put it. up with certain things. Hold yeah. it, Max. Yeah, yeah I know up. he showed up. He yeah, showed I, I know. up. I, I get it. I'm just pointing That's out what we're saying. There are, that when you have, are especially talented, the rules don't always apply to you the same way they apply to a role player. Let me say this. On principle, I agree with you in the sense that your point is legit. On principle, it's legit. Kyrie, boy, you're taking a lot of time off, man. Like, what's going on? You know, I'm, and you, you said it right. Like, we hope everything's fine with your family. But even if you're having family issues, at a certain point, while we can all acknowledge that's more important, we do have to assess you professionally. And, and, and if it's taking away from your professional work, then we comment on that. And people say, yeah, but you're not reliable professionally, even if your priorities in a larger sense are in order. As basketball fans, as, as observers, we could say, that ain't helping anything. But Stephen A., when you get past the principle and actually look at what effect will this have on the Nets, that's where we disagree. Had I not seen what I saw earlier this season, I'm with you 100%. Like, yep. You can't just, you know, walk off the street and throw it all together and beat the Lakers, let alone the Bucs and the Sixers and all these teams in the East and then whoever comes out of the West. But you know what I saw? Without KD even, this is why I go back to James Harden. Harden's basketball brilliance this year has been so far off the charts that they were basically the best team in basketball before Harden and KD even got to know each other on the court without KD. They, I, I thought that just don't, like when you say they couldn't oh. win a title together, I'm not positive about that. But I'll tell you this much, when you add KD with continuity or without continuity, if those three guys are healthy, good luck stopping them. Good luck stopping them. Well, I, I, like, put us oh, all, oh, Stephen A., oh. hold on a second. Put us all on a lie detector test and say, who wins the title if all three Man. are healthy? What are we going to say? Your point is irrelevant because I never said that they weren't win. I'm the one that picked them to win the chip. You jumped on the bandwagon five months, four months later. I I'm, the one play that them. I'm the one that picked them to win the chip. You were the one worried about their defense. This is not about that. What I'm saying to you is that at some point in time when you look at a dude, it's like, what the hell is going on? Because, see, I take it a bigger principle. And this is where you and I part ways like the Pacific Ocean, my brother. Here's the deal. I care about the regular season. I'm not I'm talking about from a fan's perspective, from an interest perspective in the league. I don't believe you get paid just to win the championship. It should be a priority for you. You shouldn't go out there and not care about winning. You should be in pursuit of the championship. True. But the salary that you get paid and the interest that you want to garner from the public is predicated on them seeing you often. And when you missing and when you're missing games on several occasions, Max, if he was gone for three weeks, Max, we would be like, oh, we, we hope everything's fine. We'll see him when we get when he gets back because we're thinking something happened. 
you need it this time to handle it, and that's it. But it's one time after another, after another, where you just taking breaks. And I'm I'm not debating that point. I understand that, but I'm saying to you, that's my point, because ultimately, those are the kind of things that are going to hurt the league. You cannot have a star. That is that 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 is that sporadic and that unreliable where, OK, I'm just going to take time off and all of that other stuff and think that's not going to come back uh, to bite the lead. Even in the you what, know what? You can't do that. What I start that's by what saying. I'm saying. I started off by saying that's legit on principle. That's legit. I can't debate that. Because at a certain point, even I, who don't care so much about the regular season, at a certain point, if a dude just murks, right, like for weeks at a time and you don't know when and all that, that's not good for the league. I'm not debating that. You went on to say continuity in terms of winning. That's what I'm debating. I'm saying that we can stand on principle. You can. I can even agree with you. Others can agree with you. But once we start making the competition point, what I'm saying is, What I saw this season, it's the reason I didn't pick them right away. I wanted to see them play together. From what I've seen this season, good luck anybody beating a healthy net squad. Whether Kyrie comes in and out in the regular season, any of that stuff. As long as KD is healthy and Harden's running that offense, I don't see how to beat these dudes. That's my point. And I don't see how a bunch of people can defend it because let me tell you something. If KD is healthy, KD ain't taking time off like that. If James Harden is healthy, James Harden ain't taking time off like that. If LeBron James is healthy, LeBron James ain't taking time off about that because they understand what really, really matters and what contributes to winning. There's a reason Kyrie is not in MVP conversations, right? Like Damian Lillard is, Kyrie isn't. No one's more talented than Kyrie. No more. We got to leave it there. But the, the Nets got to defend the three. And I just want to add, and I'm not saying because he's a UConn guy, but Andre Drummond's been a great pickup, wreaking havoc there in the paint. And we saw it again on Saturday night. All right, fellas, we'll leave it there. There's another issue with the Nets, though, that I'm very interested to discuss. Uh, Kevin Durant saying winning titles is not what motivates him. Should we buy it? And how should fans feel?